Well, good afternoon and welcome to the stunning, stunning Danish capital, Copenhagen, for what promises to be a very special 21st edition of the IAAF World Half Marathon Championships. This is an event which has grown in size and stature over the last two decades and today sees its return to a springtime place on the distance running calendar for only the second time in its history. One of the reasons for the change from the usual autumn slot was the desire to merge the two male and elite female fields into an existing big city half marathon, which is why the two world championship races will be followed in by a mass of colour and energy with 30,000 club runners and fun runners. The elite women will be the first out onto the course and they'll be followed by the men some 25 minutes later. As usual, we expect to see a great duel unfold between the two East African nations, separated by the vast Rift Valley, but always locked together at the top of the world's distance running podiums. Kenya and Ethiopia will expect to dominate the team event and the quest for the individual titles, but watch out for a very strong lineup of Japanese runners. Their women have taken six of the last seven team bronze medals. This is going to be a fascinating race and the sense of anticipation is growing. Well, we've just had uh, a wonderfully moving opening ceremony where the president of the IAAF, Lamine Diak, declared things underway here. And there you get a glimpse of some of the mass of fun runners and club runners, many of whom going for personal best. Sub 130, that's not too shabby at all for 13.1 miles in old money. It really is emerging as a great race, this Copenhagen half marathon. And what a stunning backdrop for the two elite fields. That's the old stock exchange there, with the uh, distinctive green roof. And the start and finish area just towards the left hand side of your picture as you're looking. So we're all set in what is virtually perfect conditions. It's quite fresh here. A tiny, tiny little breeze. And these races take on a very different dynamic to some of the usual big city races. No pacemakers here. This is about gold, silver and bronze. And it's about who gets here first to add their name to a rich list of champions. The women coming first, and I know many people will be very excited about the men's race. A certain Zerzaneta Dese, who arguably is already the greatest half marathon runner in history. Five times he's been the champion. He's going for six of the best here. And he's up against the last man to beat him in a World Half Marathon Championship, Wilson Kiprop, the Kenyan. So we have to wait some 40 minutes or so for the start of the men's race to get underway, along with the masses here. But the women should be on the course in around about 10 minutes time. The atmosphere has been growing slowly and steadily over the last couple of days here in Copenhagen. And you can see here, just by the number of people lining the edge of the route at the start and the finish area, we've been told, and this is a realistic expectation, we've been told that there could be upwards of 100,000 people lining the route here, because that's the advantage of amalgamating these two elite races in with the mass participation. There are tens of thousands of people here to support their relatives and friends, and they will also be treated to the rare sight here on Scandinavian land of two of the very best elite fields in the world going toe-to-toe -to -toe for these prestigious titles. I can assure you it really isn't that cold. It's a little bit fresh, but uh, one or two of these athletes just keeping warm with the blankets. But the conditions for the elites are as close to ideal as you could possibly expect. I just heard the stadium announcers on the PA system here in this uh, historic square telling us and confirming that we now do have just less than 10 minutes to go before the start of the 
elite women's race. Now, people tuning in all over the world to watch this. Certainly there's great interest in the elite women's race. Lucy Kabu goes for Kenya. She's been winning titles for that famous nation since 2006. Commonwealth gold in Melbourne. And she's the joint sixth fastest in history with 66.09 at the very fast rack half marathon course last year. Gladys Chirono, her compatriots, also in this one. And then two or three very, very useful Ethiopians. So the, uh, the race hasn't got underway. They're just uh, being allowed a little warm up here. Confirmation of that from our aerial shot. Just the last few minutes ticking down. And it's amazing to think how quickly the quality of female elite distance running has grown. The first sub-70 minute half marathon by a woman was the legendary Greta Weitz back in 1982. The first sub-68 minutes came from Alana Meyer, the South African, in 1991. And although we are only into the 11th week of competition here in 2014, 32 women have already gone under 70 minutes. The standard in female distance running is just getting better and better and better. For those of you who are fans of your history when it comes to the big names, three women have won multiple titles in this competition. Tegla Larupe, three golds in 97, 98 and 99. Paula Radcliffe, 2000, 2001 and 2003. And then Lorna Kiplagat, born in Kenya, now flying the flag for Holland in 2006, 2007 and 2008. Lamin Diak is making his way across to the start area as the clock ticks down. Always anxious moments, whether you're an elite or whether you're a fun runner, you just want to get going. One oh two Drisi of Algeria. Got a season best of seventy two minutes. So we will expect a great battle to unfold between the Kenyans and the Ethiopians. But who else will be able to put themselves right in the mix in this women's race? Much interest from the Italians here in Valeria Straneo. She was just absolutely superb at the World Championships last year in Moscow, proving that you don't need to be an East African to get yourself uh, on the podium. She tore the field apart in the elite women's marathon in fairly uh, tough conditions and was rewarded with a great silver medal. She's uh, on good form here, Straneo, the Italian, and she was in the press conference yesterday in one of the stunning municipal buildings, talking about how much she's reinvigorated in the latter part of her career. There's a wider glimpse of the start area. And you can just see the flash of yellow just beyond the bridge as the helicopter just moves round towards the right-hand third of your picture there. That's where the finish area will be. They head out towards Fredericksburg, the steepest part of the course. And then the last two kilometres, we'll see them pass the world-famous Tivoli Gardens. Copenhagen Town Square and then back here towards the finish area in front of Christiansborg Castle. So, who will be responsible for setting the early pace? The World Half Marathon Championship for women is just moments away from starting here 
a mass of colour and energy will be expected on the streets of Copenhagen, the Danish capital, resplendent in this late spring crisp sunshine. Lorna Kiplegat has won this title three times. She has the women-only world record. Florence Kiplegat, who's not here today, has set a uh, new world record this year. That's awaiting ratification, 65-12. What a time that is. Well, the organisers have assured us this is uh, a very fast, flat, one-loop course. So we have 90 women representing 40 countries here in this race. And what great battles are about to emerge on the streets. Watch out for Straneo, as I was mentioning, the Italian. And the Japanese, what a record they've got in this uh, event. Their women have taken six of the last seven team bronze medals in this competition. Interesting to see how Elvan Avlagezi gets on, the Turkish woman. She's a double Olympic medalist. That was back in uh, Beijing. She's taken time off to have a baby and has since posted a sub-230 marathon. So uh, clearly coming back to some kind of form and fitness and there's plenty of interest in her here in Copenhagen. So, almost time for the talking to stop and the action to start. We've had all the press conferences. We've felt the build-up here in the Danish capital over the last few days. And now it is game time for the world's leading elite women. Grove Dahl will be getting a lot of support uh, from the Scandinavians. She's a former European junior cross-country steeplechase and 5,000 metre champion. She was uh, 13th in the Moscow 5,000 metre final last year. So she's flying the flag for the Scandinavians, although she's uh, Norwegian. There's uh, great camaraderie amongst uh, all the Scandinavian nations, the Danes, the Swedes, the Finns. But there is Lucy Kabu. She's a tiny figure with a huge reputation. She's the joint sixth fastest woman in history at this distance. And uh, she's also a former Commonwealth champion over 10,000 meters. And she's a sub 220 marathon runner as well. Valeria Straneo, brilliant silver in Moscow last year. There she is in the familiar deep rich blue of Italy. Kabu, alongside her, being introduced uh, to the crowd. Chirono, third from the left-hand side. She won the Prague Half Marathon uh, last year and was a silver medalist in the 10,000 metres. Draskal Pettersson, a best of uh, 73 and a half minutes there, being introduced to the crowd. So... We are waiting to hear the gun. And for this great race with a brilliant history to get underway. So here just outside Christiansborg Castle, just alongside the old stock exchange, here in the heart of a city that really is in love with distance running. We are just seconds away now from the start of this Women's World Half Marathon Championship, and it's underway. A truly world-class field out onto the streets of Copenhagen. And you can see there just how many people have turned out to support these elite runners. The masses to come. 
And the elite men still some 20, 25 minutes away from taking their place on the course. But a wonderful sight here for any distance running fan. And it must be great for these elite women to be roared on by such a large and vociferous crowd. Gudetta just towards the right of picture. She won the Great North Run last year. And there's uh, Rene Kalmer just on the right-hand side. 14th in the World Half Marathon Championships back in 2009. And we already have uh, one or two casualties. I did notice as we look at the South African Kalmer leading with Gudetta just alongside her, Kabu tucked in behind. I just noticed uh, one or two walkers there at the back of that uh, elite group. And Gudetta just had a little look over her shoulder there. And if you're a fan of distance running, you may recall not too long ago in the New York half marathon, Great Britain's double Olympic champion Mo Farah was tripped and fell in the early to middle part of the race. And it's uh, a different dynamic running in a pack on the roads to that which you experience on the track. So these women all totally comfortable at this pace in the early couple of minutes. They just need to make sure that they keep their heels clear and they don't end up getting clipped as Farah did in the early stages of the New York half. Salem of Algeria is uh, tucked in there. Iwade just on the left of picture. Just 19 years of age. Japanese, as I said, just before the start with a really, really rich history in this event. Our guard of Denmark. Director just showing us the homegrown talent there. She's got a best of uh, 75 minutes. Animet our guard, so uh, no disrespect to her. We probably won't be seeing her in the mix for the medals come the closing stages. But I'm sure all the Danish competitors here in the male and female elite races will get a great reception as they move their way around the streets of their capital city. Lisa Stublik is up there for Croatia. Very, very nice runner, Stublik. 12th in the New York Half Marathon last year. As we just look at the two Danish women, just getting a little bit detached. Baumeister, well, her best is 76 and a half, so uh, she's keeping her compatriot Argard company. But they're uh, a little way detached in these early stages from the elite leaders. What a story that was for Valerie Straneo last year at the World Championships. A woman reborn after having uh, a gallbladder removed. She said it was like giving birth again. And uh, she's certainly been rejuvenated. We're talking about the Italian in the deep blue strip there. She ran away from a world-class field in Moscow last year. She's one of these instinctive athletes who, when she feels good, she just goes to the front and she's not afraid of reputation or context. And it almost took her to the world title in Moscow last year. And she richly deserved her moment on the podium with that great, great silver medal.
running past the famous naval barracks here in Copenhagen. Copenhagen started out as a Viking fishing village founded in the 10th century and then became the capital of Denmark, I'm reliably informed, early in the 15th century. So Suad Ait Salem, the Algerian, 225 marathon runner. She's uh, second from the left there with the uh, lime green shorts and the white top. She's also uh, towards the front, but you can see here Blom, 166 from Norway. She so has a best of outside 75 minutes. So it's not too surprising that we see quite a few women adrift of this lead group. But the interesting thing here is that all of the big names are still right there at the front. The Castellet Star Fortress. One of the reasons why this is such a, uh, such a great city to visit in summer or winter. And we've actually been very lucky with the weather here because uh, we were reminded yesterday at the pre-race press conference by the organisers that this time last year, towards the end of March on the streets of Copenhagen, there was uh, a, fairly, uh, a fairly significant layer of snow. So that would have put a different dynamic on the race if that had been the case this year. But they were delighted that we've been greeted by nothing but clear blue skies and relatively warm weather here for these uh, last couple of days towards the end of March. Iwade, Eight Salam, Stublik there. But there is Valeria Straneo, not afraid to lead. Backed up the uh, silver medal in Moscow uh, last year. She's not just a, a one-hit wonder, the Italian. She was eighth in the Olympic marathon in London the year before. So there was perhaps a hint that that performance was uh, within her reach at some stage that she did surprise a few people last August in Russia. Such a fine mix of old and new architecture here in Copenhagen. Everywhere is within walking distance and we certainly enjoyed our stroll from the hotel to the commentary box just uh, a couple of hours or so ago walking the uh, the empty course and it looks as though it's been a good decision by this uh, race to move to a springtime format and come to a well-established big city half marathon Next time round, it's Cardiff in Great Britain in 2016, and that too is a, a very well-established half marathon. So a new twist in the two-decade history of this event. And how refreshing is this from a European distance running perspective? It's great to see that there are athletes here not afraid to lead. And we have an Italian and a Croatian followed by a Japanese athlete in the form of the teenager Rea Iwade and the Kenyans and the Ethiopians and the Eritreans just quite happy to sit in this pack at the moment and let Straneo lead just as she did last year. So the lead group, 10 minutes uh, on the clock. 
Good to see uh, Lisa Christina Stublik. She was ninth in Berlin back in 2010. Twelfth in uh, New York last year, as I said, with a PB of 2.25. And she was fourth in the New York Half Marathon this year as well. So she's clearly got some uh, form to bring alongside her marathon strength. And speaking of marathon strength, on the left of picture, Christelle Dornay of France, just running behind Lucy Caboot. But Dornay has been around for such a long time, a brilliant runner. Great longevity from the French woman. And once again, she's up here in the mix in yet another world-class distance race. So a slightly different dynamic to the one which we were anticipating. It's Straneo and Lisa Stublik leading for Italy and Croatia. And we're still waiting for a move to be made by the talented group of Kenyans who are in this race. I haven't spoken a great deal about the uh, Ethiopians in this race. Watch out for Gannett Yalau. She's just there, third from the left-hand side. World Junior Cross Country Silver back in Punta Umbria in 2011. A really quality runner. And she won the Addis half in just inside 71 minutes. But when you think that Addis is set 2,500 metres above sea level, sub-71 minutes is a very good effort indeed. So there she is just making her presence felt towards the front of that lead group and she certainly could be featuring come the business end uh, of this race quite good when the cameramen pan down and give you a glimpse uh, of the feet because it reminds you that these athletes are very definitely running and they're not jogging finish a half marathon inside 70 minutes is very very good running indeed male or female Denmark uh, with a rich history in distance running on an elite and club level but there won't be too many men here from Denmark who run inside 70 minutes, such is the uh, quality of that barrier. You may just be hearing a little bit of sound from one or two of the bands who are gamely lining the route. They'll be entertaining some of the 30,000 or so who will be out onto the course very shortly behind the elite men. Alison Dixon of Great Britain, 137. Just uh, with the ponytails there. Good runner, Dixon. She had uh, 231 in the Brighton Marathon last year. But the field have been split as we would have expected. And I know the cameras are quite keen to show us Caroline Grovedal. There she is, just moving through shot 167. 140 is Christina Pat. Pat, the Hungarian who was 20 in the world half uh, back in 2007. But now we return our attention to the leaders and we have three Kenyans side by side at the front. Among them, Lucy Kabu, who 
on paper, for many people, was arguably the favourite for this race. But there is still a long, long way to go. Just 15 minutes on the clock. Kaboo. Very comfortable looking athlete. 66.09 last year in the Rack Half Marathon. Chirono just on the left of picture. Silver in the 10,000 metres in Moscow last year behind Tiranesh de Barber. There's Kabaris. She was fourth in the Paris Half Marathon this year. And she won the Venice Marathon last year. So great strength here among the Kenyans at the front. And just a reminder, if you're tuning into a World Half Marathon Championship for the first time, we're not just concerned here with the individual gold, silver and bronze. There are also team medals available. Each nation are allowed to start with a maximum of five runners. The times of the leading three are added together and it's the cumulative time of the three best runners from each nation which go towards deciphering gold, silver and bronze. Straneo now just tucking in behind the uh, quartet of Kenyans. I beg your pardon, quintet, because Kaptich is uh, there and so too is Ngugi. So all five of the Kenyans right at the front. And we did have Stublik and Straneo leading for Croatia and Italy. But normal service has been resumed in this early part of the race with the Kenyans dominating proceedings at the front. And it remains to be seen at what stage they just begin to think about winding up the pace and trying to stretch away from the Ethiopians. Faisa is there. She was third in the Addis Ababa half marathon earlier this year. Remember, that's uh, two and a half thousand metres above sea level. So it has to be taken into account when you're looking at season's bests as to where they were posted and at what altitude. Laurent Klippin, the American, personal best of 72 minutes. Good to see a resurgence of American distance running. Over the recent years. But the benchmark has been set by the East African nations over the last two decades. And it's been brilliant, actually, to see Kenyan and Ethiopian women producing races as thrilling as their male counterparts. It took a little while longer. The Kenyan dominance sort of began in the 1960s. The likes of Kipchoge Kano, gold medals in Mexico and Munich. And then the uh, Kenyan women didn't start coming along to win towards the uh, latter half of the 90s. But my goodness me, they've uh, made up for it ever since. National Football Stadium. If you've ever been privileged enough to uh, watch an international football match there, you'll know what a great atmosphere the stadium generates. I watched Northern Ireland play Denmark there some five or six years ago. And it was so noisy in the stadium, you could hardly hear yourself think. A city with a huge amount to offer. And there are a lot of families staying in the uh, IAAF hotel as well. So plenty of club runners and fun runners have come from overseas, not just to watch, but to run on the same course on the same day as the two World Championship fields. And there aren't many sports where you can say that if you're an amateur, that you've competed at the same time, on the same course, as those vying for 
world titles. And we certainly hope and expect, if we get good weather, that there'll be as much support in Cardiff in a couple of years' time when they host the next edition of the IAAF World Half Marathon Championships, as we're very much enjoying here in Copenhagen. Does seem to have been a great decision by the organisers to merge these two races, the men's still to come, of course, into a pre-existing big city half marathon. So, we started with a sizeable group, as is always the case, and slowly and surely, the move to the front by the quintet of Kenyan women has resulted in that very big group being whittled down to some dozen or so. And I wonder if we will see the same dynamic in the men's race or whether the five-time World Half Marathon champion, Zerzane Tadesse, will go hard from the front as he did en route to his fifth title in Kavana in Bulgaria two years ago. So, the Ethiopians and the Kenyans at the front in the women's race. Cristal Dornay was there for the French, and I do believe Valerie Straneo was still in contention for Italy as well. So while the elite women are out onto the course, we turn our attention to the men's race, and the big question everyone is asking, can the greatest half-marathon runner in history, Zerzane Tadesse of Eritrea, make it six of the best here in Copenhagen? Five times he has conquered all in this, the event in which he also happens to be the reigning world record holder. His first win came back in 2006, as we just get a reminder as to how many nations are taking part here. 113 entrants from 47 countries. And Tadesse had his first win in 2006 and then won every year up to, but not including 2010 because a calf injury contributed to him losing for the first time since uh, 2003. He finished second to the Kenyan Wilson Kiprop. Tadesse regained that title in the sweltering heat of Bulgaria in 2012. But significantly, Kiprop wasn't there to defend his gold, but he's here and he's up for it and he's in form. So what a story here in this elite men's World Half Marathon Championship. Tadesse is without doubt, there he is in the centre of picture. He's without doubt the greatest of all time and he's the defending champion, but he's up against the only man to beat him to this title in the last eight years, Wilson Kiprop, who's just been introduced to the crowd. And Jeff Whiteman, the uh, city centre announcer here, has just given Zerzane Tadesse's CV an airing for the crowd. There is no doubt he's the greatest of all time as Murayama, the leading non-African on the world standings this year. I think he's 26th, just inside 61 minutes. It remains to be seen with Tedese whether he has maintained the form that took him to that quintet of titles. Kiprop has run inside 60 minutes this year. Tedese hasn't gone under the hour since 2012. He is usually the master of peaking at exactly the right time. Can he do so once again today and seal an unprecedented sixth global title at this distance? We are about to find out. So the elite men's race is underway here in the sunshine of Copenhagen and along with it begins the journey of 30,000 club runners and fun runners. They may well finish quite some distance behind the likes of Zerzane Tadesse and Wilson Kiprop. But a wonderful sight here and great to see 
these world-class distance runners benefiting from huge crowds out here enjoying the atmosphere and the spectacle on a sunny Saturday lunchtime. Well, it will be fascinating to see what type of race emerges here. I spoke to Wilson Kiprop as we look at some of the fun runners bounding along the streets here, following some of the best in the world. And what a great privilege. And what a great additional motivation for them as they wind their way through the streets of Copenhagen. For what for some, will be uh, a run that takes close to and in some cases in excess of two hours as opposed to the one hour that many of these elite males are capable of running. Well, Wilson Kiprop, arguably the best of the Kenyans competing here today who very much wants his title back from 2010. He said yesterday to me after the press conference that he felt it might be a little cagey here today. But certainly none of the Eritreans and Tedesse would necessarily feel like they would want to put themselves out there. Tedesse went straight to the front two years ago in Kavana, but with uh, all respect to the field that he took on in Bulgaria, there wasn't an athlete of the calibre of Wilson Kiprop so he felt possibly a little more liberated in terms of hitting the front. But uh, what a great race is in the process of unfolding here. Meanwhile, we will keep rocking and rolling between the men's and the women's race because you can see here that the elite women have something close to half an hour on the clock and I just saw in the back of shot the last time we saw the elite women only Christelle Dornay and at that time Valerie Straneo of Europe were still in the mix no sign of Straneo and there is Valeria Straneo and she is just having to work hard alongside Christelle Dornay. She just glances over. So the Italian and the French woman have been dropped and so too Alameu of Ethiopia. They're not completely detached. You can see them just in the back of shot as we look at the uh, front of the elite group in this women's race. But uh, three have become detached. The French woman, the Italian and Alameu who was sixth in the great Ethiopian run last year. She has also dropped off the back of this lead group. And we're now approaching the second half of this elite women's race and the familiar duel between the bright red and the bright green, the Kenyans and the Ethiopians is unfolding. Meanwhile, the elite men just smoothly negotiating the first kilometre. Interesting to see two of the Japanese athletes up at the front of that uh, big group. Inui was second in the Tokyo half marathon a couple of years ago. But no sign yet of Zerzane Tedesse or Wilson Kiprop. On paper, the two favourites for this race. And if we are expecting it to turn into a duel, perhaps both of them quite happy to just sit in the pack in these early stages and let the first few kilometres tick along. Thirty thousand out onto the streets. 
And you can see how many are still yet to even cross the start line. It's heartening to see the extent of the enthusiasm for distance running here. And a bit of team tactics here by the Japanese athletes. Just uh, dominating things in the early stages, and at the very least, I guess, keeping out of trouble. Lambda Sam is uh, tucked in behind the uh, three Kenyans. Uh, the three Japanese athletes, I beg your pardon. Interesting competitor, Lambda Sam. Representing uh, Spain now. He's got a best of just inside 61 and a half minutes, and he certainly has the uh, reputation and the talent to get in amongst the mix here towards the end of the race. Kikuchi just on the left of picture, second in the Yamaguchi half marathon this year. And the Japanese athletes just heading things along. Now, this is a glimpse of the lead group in the women's race. Straneo and Dornay for Italy and France have become detached. And look at the quality here. 32-14 at 10K. And that is around about 68-minute pace, which is pretty good going. We may expect to see that increase in the second half of the race. And what a race we have in prospect because it's not just about the gold, silver and bronze. It's also about the team title as well. The top three finishers for each nation have their times added together and that determines gold, silver and bronze for each of the leading nations a source of huge pride to go alongside the quest for the individual glory here in Copenhagen Murayama the best of the non-African performers over the half marathon distance so far this year Lovely and light on his feet. And if you are a club runner or a fun runner, it is just amazing to watch how easy these athletes make this fast pace look. For the mere mortals among us, it would almost be flat out, but it just looks so smooth when you're watching athletes of this caliber. Natural talent, yes, but a huge number of miles have been put into making it look as easy as it appears on our television screens here. So Murayama leads. I'm just looking back down this big group and you can see Tedese. He's just uh, slightly obscured. He's actually running behind uh, Kiprop. Tedese bounces a little bit from side to side, from left to right. And that's some, sometimes how you can pick him out in a big group of athletes. So the two favourites sitting in, taking their time. And we're yet to see a move from the Eritrean or from Wilson Kiprop, the Kenyan. And let's not rule anyone else out in this lead group. It may not be Tedese or Kiprop who take the honours towards the end of the race. But a long, long way to go for these elite men. So Murayama, sixth in the World Junior 10,000 metres back in 2012. 
and Lam de Sam is just nicely tucked in behind him. Very, very good athlete. Lam de Sam. Former Moroccan switched to Spain in 2007. Just tucking in behind the Japanese athlete uh, at the moment. Tenth in the London Marathon last year, although he didn't finish the marathon in uh, Moscow, Lambda Sam. So he's in second. It's Murayama leading at the moment. And here we're looking at some of the better club runners heading out uh, onto the very early stages of this half marathon. One of the Japanese athletes veering across to his left-hand side to make sure he's collecting plenty of liquid. And it's a, it's a funny day temperature-wise here because it's a glorious, uh, glorious sunny lunchtime, but it is quite fresh in the shade here. Almost, you suggest, ideal conditions for a distance race. Maybe some of the East Africans might argue they'd be happy with another couple of uh, couple of centigrade on the uh, on the thermometer, but um, it's a lovely, uh, lovely clear day. Not too much wind. And we have been assured it's uh, quite a fast course, so it will be interesting to see what sort of times they're capable of generating. We got a glimpse of the women's clocking at 10K, which uh, was just inside, I think it was about 32.15, 32.14, which had them uh, on course for uh, a roundabout or just inside 68 minutes, which is very good going. Josephat Boyt, representing the United States, the former Kenyan, he was cleared for US citizenship in 2012, third in the Honolulu Marathon three years ago. And uh, Kenyan and Ethiopian expertise, not just represented by their own national flags here. The world's a very small place these days. And the talent from the Rift Valley, sometimes represented by new adopted nations and done proudly as well. Contrast in the noise there as the cameras just head back down the course. Oh, plenty of clapping and plenty to look at for those watching the leaders. And look who's moved through on the right-hand side, Zerzane Tedesse, the world's greatest half-marathon runner, was content to sit in the pack and with almost 14 minutes on the clock it's almost as if he couldn't resist himself so often he's a front runner he's not necessarily going to go straight off the back but i wonder whether this is just a little declaration of intent from zerzane tedesse he hasn't raced much in the last 18 months he didn't finish the chicago marathon last autumn which he was disappointed about and i just wonder whether he's sending a little reminder, a little punctuation mark to the rest of the field. I'm still here. I'm the world record holder. When it comes to this distance, I'm the number one. And you're really going to have to produce your best to deny me an incredible sixth world title. Tedesse has moved through the field and put himself right at the front of that lead pack. So, fascinating positioning here. Three or four Eritreans just over to the right of picture with that quite distinctive pale blue vest. And the Kenyans are watching and waiting and tracking. Wilson Kiprot just almost looking across to his right-hand side. There he is, second from the right. He's uh, among the tallest of the... Kenyans in this race 
and he's absolutely tracking to Desse right behind him on the far right hand side and if this is to turn into a fascinating duel then Kiprop is absolutely determined to regain the crown he stole from Tedesse in the sweltering humid conditions of Nanjing in China back in 2010. So the women now into some of the crucial parts of this race. And what a great performance this is by the Kenyans. All five of their women right up there. Yalu is there for Ethiopia. And she could definitely win this race. So World Junior Cross Country Silver, she's just there third from the left-hand side. Gudetta is trying to hang on for Ethiopia as well. Uh, Christelle Dornay, the evergreen French woman, has just become uh, a little bit detached. She's in a, a battle for the best of Europe with Valerie Straneo, who's just chucking along uh, behind her. But this is about Kenya versus Ethiopia at the front of this field. And this is certainly looking good as far as the team competition is concerned for the Kenyan women. First three to score. Now, I think one of the Kenyans has just begun to be dropped by this group. So we've got Lucy Kabu, we've got Kaptich and Gugi. So they are beginning to wind things up here in this women's race. Meanwhile, we're back with the men. They've gone through 5K in 14.30, which equates to around about 61 and a half minutes. By mere mortal standards, that is incredible. But all of these men in this lead group will be fairly comfortable with that kind of pace. And you suspect it will take a little injection at some point to really start to whittle this sizable field down. Kamwaraw, the uh, World Junior Cross Country Champion back in Punta Umbria, leads. He's got a not too shabby PB of 2.06 for the marathon. He's twice finished third in Berlin. So he's at the front at the moment. And uh, we have a fairly unusual situation we've got this lead pack split across the road running in two different groups now the reason this is quite interesting is that if you're uh, a regular runner of half marathons and marathons you'll be aware that you follow the blue line is the uh, most uh, economic route to the finish line but a fair number of those athletes who've now rejoined that rejoined that main group were over on the left hand side of the course not taking the tightest line so Wilson Kiprop the champion from 2010 said the early stages of this race might be cagey there he is in the center of your picture and that certainly looks as though it has transpired to be the case. Tedesse tucked in behind the three Kenyans who are leading at the moment. A few little palms in the bases of the backs there just as they went round that corner. A big, big group. Kiprop's looking over his shoulder just to see who's there. And most of the big names are right there in that group. So when will we see a move and who will it be from? These men are so fast that even with only 20 minutes on the clock, we're, uh, we're over a quarter of, quarter of the way through this race.
Kiprop right at the front. Chamosin's there as well, uh, first in the Udine half marathon a couple of years ago. Kiprop so confident yesterday in the press conference. I did put it to him that one of the reasons Tedesse was beaten by him in Nanning in 2010 was because he had a calf issue and he said yes but a race is a race and I know what it takes to beat him. So the men's race still a long way to go. Now we rejoin the elite women And Gudetta has become isolated. She uh, won the great Ethiopian run last autumn. Third in the Rome to Ostia half marathon this year. But she is in no man's land, as it were. She has become detached. And that means we have four Kenyans away and clear at the head of the field. So barring disasters, or a late uh, attack of cramp. It looks as though the team title will be heading towards Kenya. But which of these four women will join that rich list of champions? Lucy Kabu, arguably the most decorated of the quartet, a former Commonwealth champion, a sub-220 marathon runner. But Kapcic is there, seventh in the... 10,000 metres last year at the World Championship. Wilson Kiprop tracked by Zerzane Tedesse. Well, there were three Japanese men leading in the very early stages of this race and the East Africans were quite happy to sit off the pace. But now the two main protagonists are right at the front of that lead group and they are watching each other with intent. Chamozin is just over on the left-hand side. First in Udine, then, then Kamwaro. Really classy performer. Sixth in Tokyo this year, Jeffrey Kamwaraw, just glancing over effortlessly to his left-hand side where he sees Zerzane Tedesse and Wilson Kiprop. And they keep looking at each other, Kiprop and Tedesse, as if to add a little more to the, to the mental games that are going on. I got the feeling yesterday at the press conference that there isn't too much love lost between the, uh, the two men who fought so gallantly for the title in 2010. But Tedesse feels as though the calf issue was a major factor in him losing that race. And Kiprop said, that was irrelevant. I'm a champion, he's a champion. We both have what it takes to win this race. Kip Kamoy, just on the right of picture there. Kiprop now happy to set back in the pack. Looks as though there has been a little bit of an injection there. Josephat Boyt is alongside Chamozin at the front. Boyt, the Kenyan who now represents the United States. Cheprot just in that group as well. 15th in the world this year over the half marathon. The Ethiopians, perhaps not with the individual big names that you may hope. In fact, interestingly enough, only Haile Gabri Selassie has won this world half marathon title for uh, Ethiopia. That was a little while back now. I think it was in 2001. So the Ethiopians, arguably with their best chance in this race coming, if they uh, manage to secure yet another team medal. There's a safer, 529. 
And alongside him, 5.20, Zerzane Tedesse in that lead group, aiming for his sixth global title over the half marathon distance. Watch out for the two South Africans in this race as well. Lusafo April and Stephen Mokoka, both very, very capable performers. April, I just noticed, was in that uh, group. He was third in the New York Marathon last year. And Mokoka has got an incredible range. 3.38 for the 15 and 2.08 for the marathon. So the two South Africans are adding a touch of intrigue to these races. But we're still waiting to see when the move will come from either of the big two. Not everyone going across for a drink. It is quite cool, as I've said a couple of times. But uh, I noticed uh, one or two of the Japanese athletes making sure they picked up plenty of liquid. Respecting the... Uh, Distance here, just making sure that they keep those hydration levels up. Well, a lot of excitement to see whether Tedesse can go for the sixth title, but there's real quality in that elite men's field, and he may well not have it all his own way. And as I say that, Tedesse has gone to the front once again alongside Kamwaraw and on the near side, Wilson Kiprop. He does have a habit of enjoying going to the front, Zerzane Tedesse. He was leading the Olympic 10,000 metres in London and then drifted out of the medals in the sprint. Although he was the first Eritrean to get an Olympic medal. That was when he finished third behind Kenanisa Bakali in 2004. Oh, and there, there have been some stumblers there. One or two of the Kenyans. I just noticed Kamwaraw motion to Zerzane Tedesse to move across so that one or two of the athletes could go and get their drinks. Now, nobody went down, but there were definitely some stumblers there and it looked as though it was the rich red strip of Kenya. So no problem for Wilson Kiprop, he's there. I'm just watching for Kamwaraw. I think he's on the left-hand side, just now behind Zerzane Tedesse. And it just shows you how careful these world-class athletes have to be. Mo Farah took a tumble in the New York half marathon some month or so ago. And Kamwaraw was definitely motioning to Tedesse to give him a little bit of space so that he could get across to his right-hand side and pick up some liquid. Now, 156 is Lucy Kabu, and she has been dropped. So Chirono is still there. So too Ngui and Sally Chepiego. So Kabu, arguably the strongest of the five Kenyans in this race, is just struggling here a little bit. Gudetta desperately trying to hang on for the Ethiopians. And she really does have to make sure she can give it everything towards the finish because the Ethiopians will be hoping to get on the podium in the team competition. But we're into the last, what, 12 or 13 minutes or so of this elite women's race. They went through 15K in 48.08. So that's around about, what, 68, maybe just inside 68-minute pace. And with Lucy Kabu having been broken by this lead trio, we are at the moment looking at a Kenyan 1-2-3, but at this stage, it doesn't look as though Lucy Kabu will be among the medalists. 
But what will the order be here? Kaptic, seventh in the 10,000 metres last year. Chirono on the far side, she got the silver. And Ngugi won the San Juan World's Best 10K by over a minute in uh, Puerto Rico this year. So each of those three women with the credentials to take this title, but it would be a step up in class for each of the three of them. You can see Kabu in the background, but she's been detached and it would take a real, real effort for her now to rejoin this lead trio. And I think they know that one of the big danger women, even though they are compatriots, they're fierce individual competitors as well, I think they know that that's a big danger gone with Kabu having been dropped. The avenue of spectators and Danish flags forms a great backdrop for this last 10 minutes or so of this elite women's race. Sally Kaptic, based in Japan, alongside Mary Ngugi. Ngugi has taken a step up in class this year to win that world's best 10K in San Juan. What an opportunity for these three women. Lucy Kabu is doing her level best to stay with them in fourth place. Now these three, at the moment, are away and clear, and it doesn't look as though anybody will be catching them. So the question will be, what order will they finish on that podium? Zerzaneta Dese is leading. Kamwaro is there. Adola for Ethiopia. And has Wilson Kiprot been dropped? No, there he is. Kiprot was just out of camera range there. He is in this group, but Tadesse is winding this pace up and trying to assert his dominance on this race as they're now over the halfway stage. 596 is Stephen Makoka. He can't be ruled out. 532 to Kaylee. Six in the Addis Half Marathon. Gebri Selassie, not highly, but Gourmet. 519, the Eritrean. Eritrea aiming for yet another team silver. Zerzane uh, Tedesse is at the front. And he's starting to ask the questions of the Ethiopians and the Kenyans who are in this race. Kamwaro is right alongside him, just sending him a little message that he's ready to mount a challenge. And he certainly has the class over cross country and the marathon, Jeffrey Kamwaro to get himself on the podium. But what a second half of the race we have in prospect. And there is absolutely no doubt this is a definite injection of pace there from Zerzane to Desse. Now, I'm not sure there whether he was motioning to the crowd to respond to an Eritrean flag or whether he was sending a message to Samuel Sege, his compatriot is running just behind him. But Zerzane to Desse, the world cross-country champion from 2007, 
the world silver medalist over 10,000 metres behind Kenanisa Bekele in 2009 and the five-time world champion over this distance in this event is really pushing the pace and one by one this big lead pack of athletes is dropping away. Well, he hasn't won inside 60 minutes. Zerzaneh Tadesa in a half marathon since 2012, but he is the master of peaking at the right time, especially when it comes to this race. So Kiprop is definitely still in that group, but he's now towards the back, and it's arguably his compatriot, Jeffrey Kamwaror, with the white trainers who look slightly more comfortable perhaps than Kiprop. Back to this women's race. Sally Kaptic is in second place with Ngugi in third, but out front it's the Moscow silver medalist Gladys Chirono. This is Lucy Kapu. She's in fourth place. She's just off the back of the pace. But out front is Gladys Chirono. Can she upgrade her Moscow silver over 10,000 metres to gold here on the streets of Copenhagen? Some wonderful Kenyan athletes have gone before her on this podium not least of which the legendary Tegla Larupe. She's won this three times. So too the Kenyan-born Lorna Kiplagat, who now represents Holland. And can Gladys Chirono add her name to a rich list of Kenyan champions? She has now, as long as they haven't slowed down, certainly judging by the last checkpoint, Gladys Chirono now has some four minutes of running, possibly even less. And it's Ngugi who's moved into second place, away and clear from Sally Kaptic. Well, it will be the team title for Kenya. Of that, there is no doubt. And we will return to that women's race shortly. The elite men with almost 40 minutes on the clock. Zerzane Tedese has once or twice gone to the front and the last time we saw him there was a definite bid to break this group of athletes. Kiprop was off the back of that lead group but has got back on terms. Kamwaror is now leading and Sege has his compatriots Samuel Sege in that group for company. What a glorious moment this is going to be for Gladys Chirono. Double gold in the African Championships in 2012. Silver last year, over 10,000 metres behind the legendary Ethiopian Tyrannish de Barber on the track. But as Ngugi and Kaptic battle for the silver and bronze, the gold is destined to go the way of Gladys Chirono. Coming in now to huge applause from the crowd. It has been a race that she has timed to perfection. She gave us a glimpse as to what she can produce on the roads over the half marathon. Winning the Prague race last year inside 67 minutes. But this has been a masterful, masterful performance here from Gladys Chirono. We saw her class 
on the track in Moscow last year when she got on the podium. But now she's doing it over a different distance on a different surface. And it very much looks as though she's going to upgrade that silver from Moscow to gold here in Copenhagen. A hundred thousand people lining the routes of the Danish capital. Their flags are waving in respect of a great, great athlete and a new global champion. Gladys Chirono has without a doubt taken a step up in class here today. Many thought that her compatriot Lucy Kabu would be the one to potentially take this title for Kenya. But it's Chirono who's going to come away with the honours. Brilliant run from Mary and Gugi to come through for second place. We knew that she was in form after she won the world's best 10K in San Juan earlier this year by over a minute. But the applause will now rise again because Gladys Chirono has entered the last few hundred metres. She's tired. She's arguably slowing down just a fraction, but it doesn't matter. This has been a brilliant performance. And Gladys Chirono, the silver medalist in the 10,000 metres in Moscow last year, upgrades to gold here in Copenhagen. A wonderful performance. A great silver for Mary and Gugi. A wonderful embrace for the two compatriots and in a moment they will complete and celebrate the Kenyan 1-2-3. Kaptich coming home for the bronze. Well, brilliant performance there. All three Kenyan women coming home inside 68 minutes. They've taken the team title and they've once again demonstrated their dominance over the rest of the world, including their great Ethiopian rivals. Gold, silver and bronze to the Kenyans. And how will it turn out in the men's race? So, Jeffrey Kamwarot for Kenya. Big, strong, powerful performer. World Junior Cross Country Gold in Punta Umbria. And Zerzane Tadesse is really having to hang on here. It looks as though Kiprop's challenge has faded. Kamwarot leads. Samuel Sege, the Eritrean, is in second place. A dollar who won the Marrakesh half marathon earlier this year. He's in third for Ethiopia. Tedese is not beaten yet, but he is clearly going through a bad patch and he's in fourth. Well, Jeffrey Kamwaraw has got great, great range. He's a 2.06 marathon runner. Twice he's finished third in Berlin, as well as being a world junior cross-country champion. But he's got Samuel Sege for company. And how amazing it would be for Sege to finally get himself an individual global medal. He's had world half marathon team medals before with Eritrea, but twice he's finished fifth in this race in 2009 and 2010. Fifth in the World Cross in 2010 as well. But here he is in a podium position at the moment. And there's a definite injection of pace there by Jeffrey Kamwaraw. The Kenyan is trying to pull away from the rest of the field. And now it's Goye Adola 
of Ethiopia, who just allows one or two metres to open up between himself and the Eritrean and the Kenyan out front. Tedese is in fourth place, and maybe if a dollar starts to tire, Tedese can try and wind him in and get himself back towards the lead duo. Wilson Kiprop appears as though he's going through a little bit of a bad patch. So the duel that many people were expecting and predicting at the moment has not transpired to be between Wilson Kiprop and Zerzane Tedese. It is a duel between a Kenyan and an Eritrean, but it's Kamwaror against Sege. Two big, strong men as a dollar still hangs on in third place at the moment. And when you look at the physique of these two leaders, Kamwaror and Sege, you could mistake them for four or 800 metre runners. Quite big, strong men, muscly upper bodies, different physiques to that of the likes of Haile Gabri Selassie, the legendary Ethiopian. And there's the side-on view of Zerzane Tedese. He is a five-time champion of this distance. He's the reigning world record holder. But there's the distance from him up to the lead trio. He absolutely cannot be ruled out at the moment, but Tedese is now going to have to draw on all of his strength and belief and experience over this, his premier distance, if he is to once again get himself on the podium in these World Half Marathon Championships. He's working so, so hard to try and close the gap. Five golds and one silver. He is already the greatest half marathon runner in history. And we haven't necessarily seen Tedese's best in the last 18 months. But if he could somehow work his way back up to this group, and get himself a medal, it would be a performance almost equal to those five individual titles. He's not making an inroad on that gap at the moment, and it would seem the way the race is panning out at this stage, as though maybe his best opportunity for getting on the podium is if a dollar the Ethiopian in third begins to tire and Tedese just starts to smell an opening. They're on course at the moment. I've just got the split for the 15K marker. They went through in 42.26. That is inside the hour. So this is a really strong piece of running by Jeffrey Kamwaror. They're on course for a time inside one hour. And Samuel Sege just looked over his shoulder there to see where Zerzane Tedese was. And the answer is he's still driving, still trying and still attempting to close the gap and successfully defend this title. And we know, of course, that the individual medals have all been taken by the Kenyans and they've won the team competition. But there's a real chance here for the Eritreans to secure their first team title in this event. Sege is right up there with Kamwaror. Zerzane Tedese is in fourth place. And there's another Eritrean just in the distance behind Zerzane Tedese. So this great team competition that has been dominated by the Kenyans over the years. Two titles for the Ethiopians, two for South Africa and one each for Italy and Tanzania. The Eritreans 
have had seven successive team silvers. Could this be an opportunity for them to finally be on top of the team podium? But Jeffrey Kamwaraw seriously means business here. He's managed to get away from a dollar and also Samuel Sege. And the dynamic for silver and bronze has changed because where it looked as though a dollar was struggling, he now has moved into second place and it's Samuel Sege who's in third. Well inside the last 10 minutes now for the leaders. A look at the effort and the drive from Zerzane to Desse. You have to admire his determination. He hasn't given up here. This race has not panned out as he would have hoped and maybe expected. But he's giving it absolutely everything here. It is the performance of a champion, if not in terms of the position he's occupying but by the heart with which he is really having a go. Kamwaro, sixth in the Tokyo Marathon this year. 2.06.12 is best. Twice he's been on the podium at the Berlin Marathon. He just takes on the slight incline there. Goye a dollar in second place for Ethiopia, but there's the gap from Zerzane Tedesse's perspective up to his compatriot Samuel Sege, who occupies third. And whereas it looked as though Tedesse was going to have to close down a dollar, maybe there could be heartache once again for Tedesse's compatriot Samuel Sege because if Zerzane Tedesse is going to get on the podium, he's going to have to relegate Sege to fourth. And so many times the other Eritrean has missed out on an individual medal, but he's got to keep driving and focusing here and forget about the fact that Zerzane Tedesse, his highly decorated compatriot, is attempting to close him down from fourth to third. Tedesse cannot be ruled out of a podium finish at this stage. Look at the cadence and the speed of his turnover. Has he left himself enough to try and come back to get yet another medal? Well, Jeffrey Kamwaraw. has proven himself on two surfaces here. A brilliant World Junior Gold in cross country at Punta Umbria back in 2011. We've seen him on the roads of Berlin and Tokyo producing very, very good times in the marathon. And could he be joining Gladys Chirono as a world half marathon champion here in Copenhagen? All credit to Gaia Adola. He hasn't been completely detached yet, the Ethiopian. And there's the gap from Tedesse in fourth up to Sege and Adola in third and second. Is there a chance that Zerzane Tedesse can somehow close the gap on his compatriot? Wilson Kiprop was hugely confident coming into this race. But he's become detached from the lead group. Tedesse's had a go, but when the real injection of pace came from Jeffrey Kamwaraw, Tedesse was not able to respond as he did so well in the previous five editions of this race in which he has taken the title.
The last time split we had gave us an indication that this is going to be a sub 60 minute performance. It is possible that Kamwaraw has tired in the closing stages. We've seen him looking over his shoulder just to check where Gaye Adola is and whether he's closing. Fifty six thirteen at twenty K. This is really, really quick. An excellent performance. It is going to be well inside sixty minutes for Jeffrey Camwaraw. Still looking over his shoulder. He's getting tired. He knows he's closing in here on arguably the biggest win of his career. Yes, he is a global junior champion at cross country, but this is a senior title. One that his highly decorated compatriots have taken in the past. Turgat's won it twice. Paul Koskai's been victorious. Martin Lell, Paul Kirui. Some great, great names in Kenyan distance running have conquered this race. And Jeffrey Kamwaraw, at just 21 years of age, looks as though he is joining them. What a battle there's going to be for the silver and the bronze between Gaia Adola and Samuel Sege. But it's Jeffrey Kamwaraw who is now moving through some of the back markers in the female elite race. And he now is reinvigorated by the noise, the reception and the applause from the crowd. Gladys Chirono took the women's title just a few moments ago and it looks as though it is going to be double gold and double delight for Kenya as Jeffrey Kamwaraw comes round to receive the adulation and the applause of everyone who's gathered here at the finish line. What a huge, huge talent this young man is. His second global title, the junior cross country crown. But this is a senior performance and this announces his arrival as one of the greats. A brilliant, brilliant performance just outside 59 minutes. He has demolished a world-class field. And finally, after twice finishing fifth in previous editions of this race, Samuel Sege gets the silver. A dollar hung on gamely for the bronze. And as Jeffrey Kamwaraw bounds back down the course, Zerzane Tedese passes him. Fourth this time for the greatest half marathon runner in history. He's produced an effort of real class there. The first time he's run inside 60 minutes for almost two years. He gave it absolutely everything and he may not have finished first this time, but he's once again demonstrated to Desse that he's got the heart and the drive of a champion. He's lost that with dignity, but I'm sure he'll be delighted for his compatriot Samuel Sege. And I just wonder whether the Eritreans have taken their first global team title after seven successive silvers. Jeffrey Kamwaraw, at 21 years of age, has just shown us there is a glittering career ahead of him on the roads of global distance running. Well, still waiting for confirmation of the team competition. But I'm pretty sure 
the team title has gone to the Eritreans. And what an achievement that would be. Well, it's been a great race here. Some very, very fast times being set. Jeffrey Camaror, it looked as though it was going to be sub 60. And instead of slowing down, he actually sped up. Sege was in second place with 59 20. A dollar given the same time to Desai, 59 37. No disgrace there for the Eritrean. Wilson Kiprop came home exactly on the one hour mark. So some very, very fast times. But the Eritreans are waving their national flag. There will be a gold today for Zerzane Tedesse, but it's not an individual title, it's the team gold. Well, a wonderful race. All the talk before today was about a duel between the men who took gold and silver in China in 2010, Wilson Kiprop and Zerzane Tedesse. But it's Jeffrey Kamwaraw who has finished here as the champion, 21 years of age, the fastest time in the world this year. That was sheer, sheer class. He was so strong, Kamwaro. It certainly looked from the body language perspective as though he did have something special today at the halfway stage. Kiprop was tracking to Desse in the early part of the race, but when Kamwaro started to put the hammer down, there were very, very few who could respond. So Eritrea with the team title. Kenya take the silver and Ethiopia yet another bronze for them. Christiansborg Castle, the site of the start and the finish. What a wonderful race it's been. Only the second time this event has been moved to a springtime slot as opposed to its normal running in the autumn. And it really seems as though this has paid off by the number of people who've lined the route. The quality of Eritrea's performance, they only missed the Kenyan team record by two seconds. Jeffrey Kamwaraw is the world half marathon champion. What a performance, so strong, so determined and still only 21 years of age. Samuel Sege finally gets a silver after twice finishing fifth, a dollar the bronze and it's fourth this time for Zerzane Tedesse. Makoka finished just outside the top 10, but look at the number of personal bests being recorded down that field and a national record for Arikan of Turkey. Yet more PBs. Josephat Boyt, the expatriated Kenyan, now representing the United States. He's finished with a personal best just outside 61 and a half. The organisers promised us a fast course and a fascinating race, and that's exactly what we got. Still very high -class running. 
Still athletes coming across the finish line. Gladys Chirono, silver medalist in Moscow last year. She's a global champion now. What a great finish from her in the elite women's race. Mary and Gugi following up that great uh, 10K victory in San Juan earlier this year. She takes the silver, Kaptich the bronze, and Kabu, surprisingly, the biggest name of the quintet of the Kenyans, finishes in fourth. Yet more personal bests here. Yalu inside 70 minutes. Klepin, good performance from her, the American. A national record there for Gladys Tejeda of Peru, finishing in 26th place. One or two of the elites still making their way towards the finish line. In a moment, we will be treated to the presentations. But the interviews and the accolades are starting to come now. Jeffrey Kamwaraw, when he made that break, only a dollar and Sege managed to go with him. So strong in the upper body. Looked over his shoulder. He was tired, but he was away and clear. And he now has a global senior title to go alongside his world junior crown in cross country. Jeffrey Kamwaraw shaking his head, a little bit of disbelief there as the interviews come in thick and fast. And he'll be on the front page of the Kenyan national newspapers tomorrow. Of that, you can be sure. Hopefully there'll be one or two people toasting his great success. I think there might be one or two Tuskers opened in uh, Jeffrey Camelraw's hometown. Great performance and still at the tender age of 21, quite some accolade. So we're just waiting for the presentation, which is due in the next few minutes. Clock still showing inside uh, 70 minutes. And some of these athletes are very, very tired indeed. The elites make it look fairly easy running inside the hour. But it takes a great deal out of these men to try and come home inside 70 minutes. World-class medical treatment here. Confirmation that after so many successive silvers, the global team title belongs to the Eritreans, beating the Kenyans, and it's the bronze for Ethiopia. Fifteenth for the host nation, Denmark, finishing just behind the Rwandans. That's what it takes to become a champion. The Kenyan victory 
absolutely assured with their individual one, two, three, silver for Ethiopia and yet another bronze medal for the Japanese women. No individual medalists for them, but as a team, they are so, so strong. Well, that wraps things up here from the Danish capital. We appreciate your company over the last couple of hours. The latest edition of the IAAF World Half Marathon Championships has been an overwhelming success. The second time it's revisited Scandinavian shores and only the second time the male and female elite races have been joined on to a mass participation big city half marathon. And hopefully this is a pattern which will be repeated with success when this great competition regathers in Cardiff in two years time. In the meantime, thanks very much for your company. We'll see you very soon.